Hello, good morning. My name is Unwani Godwin and welcome back to Emoji Economics. Our discussion for today is on calculus. So, I know you must have heard about calculus one time or the other, or maybe you have worked on calculus right now, and so on and so forth. But uh, basically, calculus, calculus is a very broad, calculus is very broad, very broad, but we shall be specializing in the aspect of calculus that are necessary for economic students, for the understanding of economics. So that is to tell you beforehand that we won't be dealing with angles, like signs, whatever, sign, target of whatever, cosine and all of that, we won't be dealing with those things. So, Calculus is a mathematical study of continuous change. It is divided into two categories. So when we say mathematical study of um, mathematical study of continuous change, so that simply means we are looking at the change that the change in something as a result of a change in another thing. So that is what calculus is basically about. Now that may not be you may not understand what that is yet until we start to solve examples. So I said um, like I, like I said earlier that calculus is divided into two. So we have two aspects of it. First is differentiation and the second is integration. So our first couple of classes will be dealing with will be dealing with differentiation in our first couple of classes. Uh, and later on we'll you know start to talk about integration. They are not they are not big deals, don't worry. Now what is differentiation? Differentiation, this measures the rate of change of quantities. It measures the rate of change of quantities. Now the dependent variable, basically they are usually uh, two set of variables. So we have one which is a dependent variable, and then we have one or more independent variables. So I don't think that should be a big deal to us right now. Now we are, yeah, the dependent variable is it, it, we call it dependent because the behavior of it depends on the behavior of other kind of variables that we call the independent variables. Now for instance if I if we start to talk about the demand and the demand function. So we have an increase in price related to a reduction in quantity demanded other things being equal. So price there is the one affecting quantity like an increase. So something has to happen to price first. An increase in price we need to have reduction in quantity demanded. So price there is the independent variable. Now quantity demanded happens to be a dependent variable because the value, its value or values depend on the way, depend on the behavior and the way at which um, the price changes. So that is basically what it is. Now the dependent variable is usually expressed as a function of the independent variable. So there are examples on the board. Now uh, we have something like this. So y is a function of x. So this is just telling us that y is a dependent variable and x is the independent variable. So y is depending on x. The value of y depends on the value of x. So y is a function of x and then we have this which is minus 6 x raised power 5 plus 4. So that is the function. Now um, we have b which is said r. b r is a function of t. So I don't know what r is. Okay, just something like that. r is a function of t. Okay, and then this is this then happens to be the, um, the function. Uh, fully expressed 8t squared minus 5t plus 2. Then we also have q, which is quantity is a function of price, and that gives us 7 plus power 4 plus 15t plus power minus 3. Now, in terms of economics, I think we should we really we should uh, we should understand that c is this q here is most likely to be quantity supplied simply because look at how it relates with uh, p. So p here is positive, this is 7 plus power 4, which is the same thing as plus 7 plus power 4. p here is positive as well plus uh, 15 t raised power minus 3 okay yeah so from log indices 3 raised power minus 3 is same as 1 over p cube right so that would be 15 over p cube p is still positive anyway so that's that's tell us that there's a positive relationship between price and quantity and that's of course when you're talking about supply on here uh, supply the relationship between quantity supply and you know price but that's that's about that if it's uh, negative for example that would have a quantity demanded because an increase in price leads to a reduction in quantity demand and so that is telling us that there's a negative relationship between the two and the signs there should have been minus instead of plus but that's what we are going today you know that's just by the way now how is differentiation done how is differentiation done it's not a big deal now you see differentiation like here i have five first derivatives of the following so i want to do the i want to solve for the first derivatives of this particular list of this of this function the three of them you can you be having an assignment that you are going to work on you know, at the end of the video so that's not a big deal anyway now we are saying that we find the first derivative and that simply means that find the change in y the change in each of the dependent variable from the very first change in each of the independent variable so that's the meaning of first derivative so we could have multiple derivatives I could have to that to find the first derivative second derivative the third derivative and all of that and the functions are not really this simple but because this is the initial class on calculus so we have said the the basically have to start from what is in everything 
We have, we have to start from, from what is simple, so let's just leave it that way. Um, first derivative is saying that you differentiate once. Okay, you are looking for the change in y um, as a result of the first change in x. So if it were second derivative, we'd have to you know, do it twice. So if you first look for the, um, the change in um, y as a result of the change in x, when you get your result, then you differentiate again. Alright, so, but we'll get to things like that um, later on. So it's not, just keep on differentiating, it's not a big deal. Now, so we have to find the first derivative of the following, so which is y equals this and this. Now, how to do that? So, we just write is dy dx, and in some textbooks, it could be in form of this delta y um, delta x. Okay, that is delta is delta represents change. I am the same thing as d. Okay, just normal dy represents change. So, change in y as a result of change in x. So, that's what it means. Now. You might mistakenly write a slanted D, okay, which is this kind of D, okay, this change in Y as a result of, or change in whatever the, the uh, kind of variable is, um, change in X. This would be wrong in this kind of case because whenever you have a slanted uh, sign, it's a, a slanted design, you are talking about partial differentiation, okay, and partial differentiation is telling you that, okay, um, the dependent variable is a function of multiple independent variables. The dependent variable is a function of multiple independent variables. So you are now looking for the change that occurs in the dependent variable from one of the dependent variables. So which is to tell you that the total change that will occur in the dependent variable, the total change now will depend on the changes in each of the, you know, on, in each of the independent variables. All right. So, but when you are just looking at, when you are just looking at the change in the dependent variable as a result of the change in one. Of the independent variables. Now, uh, for example, let's say we have QD. QD is a function of, uh, let's say this is 10, 10 plus, um, no, it's going to be plus minus 5P. Let's say this is QDY minus 5PY, then plus, let me say 3T plus um, 0 0.5, let's say YD. So in this particular case, constant demand is a function of the price of the good, it's a function of consumer taste, and it's a function of the individual's income, disposable income rather. So here, if you were if you were to look for the change in quantity demanded as a result of the change in price, so basically the change that we are calling this is a function of the changes that are occurring in all of these variables, the independent variables. We are just trying to hold other variables constant and then check for the change that occurs in quantity demand as a result of price alone. So it is in that case that we we'll now see uh, this will be changing. So this slanted D change in Q D Y, okay. And um, change in change in, so the change is a slanted D, which is talking that which is saying that this is a partial differentiation. So we are partially differentiate, we are partially differentiating in the with respect to the changes in one of the variables that affects it, which is a uh, price, only based on income or disposable income constant. So that is when we use this kind of thing. You know, so you might be excited that you've understood calculus pretty much, and then you know, when you're writing your paper, you don't really know the difference between the Slanted D and the um, the normal D that you were supposed that you are used you are supposed to, use to denote a differentiation and you know some of you could have this kind of fashionable handwriting that um, instead of writing a straight D you write a slanted D so I'm just trying to tell you beforehand or warn you beforehand that they have different connotations when it comes to calculus so you really want to check that out now let's just come back to the business so if you want to differentiate this then we have this is going to be uh, divide the x so divide now we have to pay attention to what i'm going to be here divide the x is going to be, uh, equal to where is the independent variable Independ independent variable is the unknown let me write this let me write this in an easier way for you to understand so let me just write as y equals minus 6x to the power 5 plus 4x to the power 0 now n to the power 0 is 1 except 0 itself Okay, x to the power 0 is 1. Now, in this particular case, x to the power 0 is 1. So it's, it's more or less saying, it's more or less saying y equals minus 6x5 plus 4 into brackets 1. So 6x5, this 4 times 1 is still 4, and then we have our 4 back. So I'm putting x there because I want us to deduce something. I want us to deduce something. So um, the next one, so divide the x, divide the x is now going to be equal to, where is x in the function? x is here, right? So we bring the power of x. So pay attention, please. The power of l should be used to multiply its coefficients. So 5 comes here. This part that is here comes here. Multiplied by the minus 6 you have already. Okay, then x 5 minus 1. Then uh, plus 
Guys, we have x here again, right? So, what is the power of x? That's 0. So, you make 0 multiply its coefficients. So, 0 into bracket 4. Then, you have this x, 0 minus 1. So, that's how the transition is done. Okay, so divide the x. Divide the x now equals 5 times minus 6 is minus 30. x, 5 minus 1 is 4. Then, plus, this is already 0. So, 0 multiplied by everything is going to give us 0. And then we have our final answer is minus 30x raised to our four. So it is simple, pretty much simple. That's good. Now, so that's the first. So that's um, is it a? That's first a. And the second question is the second question is um, um okay. The second question is this. The second question is this. R. We are let me just write. I'm going to write the function. So R is equal to x t squared. R is equal to x t squared. Okay. I do so it's 8t squared minus 5t minus 5t plus 2 plus 2. Alright, so, so what we want to find is this still dy the x or what? So it's going to be the r alright the t the r the t. Okay, that's what we're looking for here. But before we get to that, before we get to that, I can just express this in a simpler way again. So I'll just say r equals 8t squared. Minus 5t plus 2t raised to power 0. This is the t that is raised to power 0, not the 2. Okay, so which was just, you no, know, it was just the kind of thing that we did here. Just because I want to bring out uh, something. So now let's differentiate this. So we have the r, the r, and the t. The r, the t equals 2 multiplied the coefficient of t squared. So 2 into bracket 8, then t, 2 minus 1. Alright, then minus. What is here is 1 basically. So 1 into bracket 5, then t 1 minus 1, then uh, plus all the other is 0, 0 into bracket 2, then t 0 minus 1. Alright, so then this one this gives us 2 times 8 is 16. 16 t, 2 minus 1 is so 16 t raised to power 1, then minus 1 times 4, 5 is minus 5, t raised to power 0, then plus 0. Now this is going to give us 16t minus 5. Since t raised to power 0 is 1, so 5 times. Okay, let me just write it. Okay. And therefore we have 16t minus 5. Now I want us to make an observation. You see that the um, the constants in the two functions became zero after we differentiated them. The constant in the two functions. Now what was the constant in the first question? That was 4. That was right. So when we differentiated 4, um, it disappeared at the end of it, became 0. Alright. And then, um, which was the next one? So in this second example, when we differentiated 2, for example, you know, we made 2 to become 2 t raised to power 0. When we differentiated it, it became 0, 0 again. So that is why whenever you are differentiating, you assume that the constant is 0, and that is actually right. So you correctly assume that it is 0. So you don't bother to deal with it. Now, the thing is, let me, let me just give you a uh, simple example before we move on to the assignment. Let's say we have, okay, no, um, it remains one thing, it remains one thing. How do we differentiate something like this? So here you are not giving what's the independent, what the dependent rule was. We are giving this. So let me just, um, let me add something to this. Let me say minus 50. So here you have uh, minus 50. All right, so we have something like this. So we are giving function of e, function of e equals 7p4, 7p raised to power 4 uh, plus 15, P raised to the power minus 3, then minus 50. Alright, so how do we go about it? So here, you don't do the, the what's the what, no. So what you have to do is because you are differentiating ones, ones. So you just say f, then an inverted comma, f prime. So you see um, the function of p. Alright, because you are differentiating ones, ones, what you just write is f prime or f raised to the power inverted comma, then you put the function in bracket. So if I if you were to differentiate these two, I start in f. Then two inverted commas. Then you put the uh, the independent variable inside the inside the bracket. Or if you are differentiating three times, so f you know um, three inverted commas. So the number of times you are differentiating is going to give you is going to um, tell you the number of inverted commas that you put there. So it depends on the test that you are you are reading anyways. So stars might be written like this in the test you are reading. I might be written like this. I might be reading written in form of delta. So you don't have to disturb yourself about that. So how do we go about this? What is the power on, on p here? 4. So we say 4 multiplied by the coefficient of p raised to the power 4 is 7. Then p 4 minus 1. Alright. Then uh, plus 
minus 3 times uh, 15 okay this is minus 3 times 15 then t raised to the power minus 3 minus 1 then i don't write anything for 15 okay since we've already proven that it's going to be equal to 0 so i don't write anything for 15 so we will continue so f e equals 28 right 4 times 7 is 28 p 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 then plus times minus we have to be careful Plus times minus times plus, but what is yes plus? So plus times minus is minus, then times plus again is minus. So minus 3 times 15 is 45, if I'm not wrong, 45. Then P minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4, minus 4. So that's that's the answer. So uh, when we differentiate this, well, when we find the first derivative of this, we have 28 to the power 3 minus 45 to the power minus 4. So instead, it's pretty much simple. Pretty much simple. So where is your assignment? Let me just go to the assignment. So you attend to this question. Uh, you attend to this question. Let's say y, y is a function of, let me say z. Y is a function of z. So this is your assignment. Y is a function of z. And it's going to give you minus 18, minus 18 z squared plus, you know, uh, 5 z, then plus 13, plus 13. That's okay. Then the fifth one is going to be, um, is going to be so q let me just say uh, q is a q um, is a function of let me say p and this is going to give you 120 minus uh, 1 over 4 p raised power 8 1 over 4 p raised power 8 then um, plus plus um, 15 p raised power 2 all right so just just something that i just you know just thought of just, just make the uh, D and E, make them your assignments, uh, practice with them and I would appreciate it if you leave your answers in the comments box. So let us just look at the answers. I don't think this should be a problem, this shouldn't be a problem for you to handle. So thank you very much for attending this class. The next class will be moving on to, I think the product rule, yeah the product rule because there are different rules in calculus. Product rule, they'll move to quotient rule, they'll move to more complex things in calculus. It's not always going to be straightforward, especially if you are an undergraduate student. So see you in the next class. Oh! I forgot to mention, if you are attending our classes for the very first time, please make sure you click on the subscribe button and then you turn on notifications by clicking on the bell button that appears afterwards. And what else should you do? Watch as many videos as you want on the channel and await other interesting videos. See you in the next class. Hope you enjoyed the video you just saw. If you want more of our videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Now, there is a way to enjoy to make the best of our YouTube channel, which is to go to the playlist section of every video or of every topic. So, what you have to do is just type MOG Economics on YouTube. When the page displays, so make sure you subscribe. A bell button appears immediately, so you click on that bell button. Then go to the playlist section. So, you are going to see our videos, playlists, description, and all of that. So, just go to the playlist section, and whatever topic you are looking for, click on look for the playlist and click on um, the video. Now, our playlist have their classes, have the classes arranged in a very chronological manner. So if you want to see a class on ISLM, so it starts from the beginning, the simple ones to the um, difficult to the complex ones. So if you want to see a video on let's say elasticity of demand, so you start from what is price elasticity, so from there then to the basic ones and on and on. So I'm just telling you that in case you really want to make the best of this YouTube channel. And there's also one thing that I want to add, uh, which is that our YouTube classes may not be enough for you, you may want um, you may want a regular interaction with um, with the tutors and all of that. So what you just have to do is to check the description of the video. You are going to find a WhatsApp link. So, but before you do that, I really have to tell you that clicking that link is going to lead you to our one of our schools. So it's going to lead to some of our schools. So we have um, MOG School of Economics on WhatsApp, and we make it of our YouTube channel to run the groups. So the classes are paid for. So you are meant to pay for them. So to join our econometric school. So that is 2,500 Naira per month and to join our microeconomics or macroeconomic schools, so that is 2,000 Naira per month. We also have, um, we don't have classes or we don't have schools of mathematical economics because, you know, uh, microeconomics has its mathematical aspects as well as macroeconomics. So the mathematical aspect of macroeconomics is treated with, is treated in the macroeconomic school and the mathematical aspect of microeconomics is treated with the micro, microeconomic school as well. So I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.